Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, chat, for this fellowship, for this webinar that we are going to embark on now. And it looks like it's very exciting. Be still and know that I am Yahuwah. Yes, Father. Those who wait upon Yahuwah will, will get whatever they ask for when, because they are, well, there are two or three together, Amen. together in your name. You are there in the midst, Father. You heard our discussions and um, indeed the, the knowledge have increased in this last day, good knowledge and bad knowledge. And we thank you for bringing them into our attention, especially the good knowledge, Father. So we welcome the Holy Spirit here to minister to our hearts and our minds mm -hmm. and to understand the concepts that are being explained this evening. Mm -hmm. We thank you for all your blessings, Father, and we thank you for your corrections in Yahusha's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, sister. Oh, wow. So be still. And know that I am Yahuwah. Don't you love yeah. that, brother and sisters? Oh, yeah. Oh, it, 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 I, he never ceases to amaze me by the way uh, he, he, he kind of corroborates what I've been talking about during the day. Yeah. Today, when I like, left my brother's house to come here, mm. Uh, yesterday we attended a funeral for one of my cousins. She died. Mm -hmm. That's the one I told you to son I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. She died. Mm -hmm. So we attended the funeral and the people did something foolish in my eyes and I was upset about it. And I told mm -hmm. my brother, I'm like, oh, leave it, not this brother, another one. Mm -hmm. they, at, at the funeral, and, and Susan, I heard this is common in the Philippines, so tell me if this is so or not. Mm -hmm took the baby and they put it over the coffin three times. Mm. And I was upset that they would do something like that. My brother, not Perry, the other one, mm. he was really upset because it was his grandchild. Uh, they did that. I, hear, I, so, don't, I have never heard of that, just so you know. I don't know how okay. prominent that is. Okay, this brother, whose son's child they took and did that with, has a Filipino wife. Mm. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, yeah, we do that home, too. So that, that's why she didn't object. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the point is, I was telling him, I says, even in your own language, that it is written, who are you, O oh man, to ask God why, when, and where, like Job, for instance. Mm -hmm. And man, an answer. Who are we? We are, we, we, where were you, Job, when I did this? Where were you when I did that? So mm -hmm. why are you... Why are you judging me in, in other words, right? So mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you come and you put, be still and know that I'm Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That's the answer to what I was telling my brother. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. says, we are still and know that he is sovereign. And that means he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. That's what still and knowing that he is God. You see? So the, what's, what's the God, point? Yeah, the word God doesn't convey the meaning. You see, Yahuwah better conveys yeah. the meaning. Yeah. Uh, but, but what's the point of moving the baby over the... Uh, they, you know, they believe in all kind of stupid dreams. Oh, I, don't, I cannot tell you, my sister. Oh, I have oh. not heard of that until now. And they're doing that. They say, you know, they, they're saying, oh, that departed soul is now going to protect this child. I say, give me a break. Oh, That's correct. You are going across a baby. I said, you guys don't even know how yeah. contaminated you become when you go by a dead person. That's correct. You got it. I quoted Numbers 19, but they don't know anything about that. Mm. So, so I told him, you know, you have to shower when you go in the house. When you go back home, we have to go shower right away. We cannot just go to sleep like that after going to a funeral home and all this stuff. What they did, did they get some water? And wash their hands, sprinkle some water, like you know, like how the Roman Catholics baptize kids. Yeah. In the water and sprinkle it like that, mm -hmm. and they pass their hands over a, 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 a fire, mm -hmm. and they think that's it. They're purified now. Wow. I said, 
was a mikvah here, that's what I would do. I would go into the mikvah and, and be baptized because that's what the word says to do. But since there is none, we are going straight to the shower when we go home. <laughs> And that's what Rita and I did. We got home in the night around, I don't know what time it was, close to 10, but we went and showered. We said we cannot sleep like this because according to the Bible, we are unclean. There you go. There's the so way. You learn something, I hope. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We had the occasion to, to talk with two little, two young girls yes. about, you know, then. Oh, so. Yeah, we go on our subject. Let's go on our subject. Oh, Susan. Okay, you can you can share that if you'd like. <laughs> well, they were very interested in uh, knowing more about the Bible, so oh. we began to tell them about uh, uh, some some things that were revealed to us by the grace of the Almighty, going to the Paleo Hebrew to the roots of our faith mm. and to understand. The messages that are in the letters, in the like first uh, verse of Genesis, Bereshit, or even the title, the message of salvation that you can have it from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, more and more about, because they were also um, in, in their own looking for more, they were very open and they wanted more for us to share. So mm -hmm. we went to the prophecies, going even to to the Revelation and Daniel, and going mm -hmm. to understand more about this work of, of the enemy to deceive. Because mm -hmm. we went to, to these words that Yahusha, our Savior, addressed to his disciples before he left the earth. Mm -hmm. He said, "Be aware not to be deceived." So he was addressing first of First and only to the believers, they can be deceived really because they think they have the truth, mm -hmm. but because the truth, you know, entirely truth, known and, and lived, mm -hmm. it cannot be a saving, the saving one that mm -hmm. the Yahusha wants to pour in us through his Ruach HaKodesh. Right. So uh, yeah. we try to open more, you know, the understanding. Praise and we were blessed to share. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, you know, I believe we are definitely in this age of understanding. And uh, I think more and more, did you say young people, I think, are asking questions. Oh, Good. This one girl, she was so interested. She was mm -hmm. taking notes. She came over and said, we don't know, but we were having a ball. You know, and brother, hmm. while we're on the subject, you know, it's for a, it just came to me for a while now. I think the 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 um, organized the organized churches have been um, expressing how the church attendance have been decreasing in the past how many years, and mostly because of the young people that are leaving the churches. <coughs> But this might actually be by, now we, we see they may be leaving the, the, you know, the institutionalized meeting and churches, but perhaps leaving so that they can get a break from certain type and manner of indoctrination and yes. conscious, none unaware from those who are ministering. I mean, most of them are doing it out of genuine, you know, genuinity of heart. But for them to leave the, this institutionalized churches, to get a break from that, and then you know what? The Ruach is at work and is yes. impressing upon their hearts. There are, you know, this, we live in the, 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 the times, the end, the end days. <laughs> and it's obvious Right, it's all around us. The signs, so so it's great for us to be available to them. I guess is what I'm saying, right? Uh, and, and going further, uh, Susan, I saw again for for the real searcher, for the sincere one, yeah, who is opening doors. That's one right. of the girls was uh, in the study of robotics, wanted to to persevere in this direction, and she told us she didn't feel like it's something that she really wants. She mm -hmm. didn't know why. Mm -hmm. And when I 
explain her about uh, what's happening with this ar- artificial intelligence and you know all this mm-hmm. stuff that are coming over and, and taking uh, the usual way of living and tra- to an other level you know she mm-hmm. kind of understood that she needs to focus on what the, mm-hmm. the world and that's how her way in life will be cleared up and she will have the reward even mm-hmm. in finding the right partner in life you know Hallelujah. and so sister you yeah. just pointed her to that direction and you know yes. here's the other thing i was thinking when you share the name of yahuwah and and point them to the paleo the you know the purity of the language um i also think that when they do their research um you know you do a google search in youtube I, there's only a few channels that will come up that use yeah. that name right yeah. And, and by example, I had uh, someone subscribe to the YouTube channel, this YouTube channel that we have, and um, and and someone I don't, I have not met before. So he probably came across the YouTube video. And the point I'm saying is, um, I looked into his channel and I see that this this uh, person is collecting YouTube uh, channels that has to do with the Hebraic roots, you know, and, and he is, it's like he's compiling a, a list of channels that is going through Genesis. And, and I look through the, the channels and it looks like he's putting together, you know, and, and, and he's, I see the YouTube uh, videos has the name Yahuwah, you know? So, yeah, I think uh, we are definitely doing, I believe, our part and just being available yeah, and having this discussion. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Praise Yahuwah. So we're going to take this uh, beautiful truth um, from Psalm 4610 and we're going to just appreciate it and we're going to take it <coughs> um, tonight. We're going to just slow it down and um, you know, and feel free to want to, you know, if you want to interject. And I know, brother, that you're, you know, by the strength of the Ruach, you and Sister Rita are here tonight. And I appreciate that. Thank you. And even with Sister Rusana sharing the, the learnings that you're always engaged in doing as well. So um, we were, we ended our last discussion with, because I think we've, we've talked a lot about some heavy well, not heavy, but some some things that we I believe we already know, um, unconscious to us. But now that we know that our body makes up a big part of the unconscious self, right? Okay. Now we've become conscious of that. Just to it, and and um, you know, so so now. So we ended last discussions with some principles that, and I I labeled it Yahuwah's principles of healing and restoration. And again, this is a working list. It's a generalized list, and I'm we can we all have our own, you know, our own uh, what works and what you know how we incorporate it in into our worship and our, into our study, but. I just put this together and because I wanted to, um, you know, let's go into it into detail. So I have here, because we kind of brushed through it, glossed over it real quick because we were running out of time. But Mm -hmm. the principles that we sort of ended with last discussion is, you know, in order for us to even open ourselves up to, to the healing to the redemptive, to the rest, restoration power of Yahuwah's healing, we have to recognize these principles at least, right? So we have the very first one, Psalm 46. The mm-hmm. first part of that, it says, be still. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, if you look at um, some of the, you know, the way the, 
psychiatric or the psychologist, the way they um, they tackle or they present their um, their uh, therapeutic approach when it comes to people who come to them and looking for psychological help, right? What I notice is if, if you pay attention to their to their toolbox, so to their their self-made or self-put together principles, it really is the same thing. Like you'll hear a psychiatrist and they will say regulate, like the word yeah. regulate. Yeah. Right? Um relate. You know, or or they'll say, you know, release, like all of these things. They're talking, they're touching on a, a concept that based on their educational background and experience, they have seen to work, but it really is a mimic or a, you know, the principles have originated from the scripture. We know this, right? So be still. And then the second part is, and no, that word no is huge, right? Yes. Okay. And then... We have the repent, replace, rejoice. I don't know if we'll be able to um, go into detail with all five of them, but at least I think we will go over the be still and know that I am Yahuwah, as yeah. per Psalm 4610, right? right? So let's start with the be still. And I like to engage into some of the scientific concepts and background behind it because um you know you you can't it gives us uh, a a light to appreciate from a from a an, a, an angle that's that that even the science has been alluding to right but we just we just take it from that angle and hopefully we understand why a little bit more. We can appreciate it from a from a scientific perspective as well. So, so I, I start with like just something very short and simple. The law, one of the law of thermodynamics, right, is that objects at higher elevation has more energy. Okay, so and and I bring this this um, video before us because we have been so we've been discussing about how um, you know we were uh, light beings in the garden so before the fall we were flesh and bone there seemed to have no mention of flesh and blood we were um, we were dwelling in the place where you know Yahuwah himself walked in the cool of the day so we know that prior to the fall that adam and eve they were um not in the same place that we are familiar with today so post fall we see that um we see that something's happened that you know you can you know i think brother shem quickly noticed you know we we fell, <laughs> you know, we okay. fell from that, right? So, and, and I want to use the, the, just so we can kind of understand, I want to use the term fallen messenger because Adam yeah. is the first Malki Zadik and he had a purpose, he had a message to share. And then alongside Eve, but both of them fell. So they're fallen angels. So if you want to use that, fallen messengers, right? So why is it that we need to be still? Because we understand based on looking at the law of energy, when it comes to energy, and here's where I'm going to play this video quickly. Since energy can never be created or destroyed, and objects at higher elevations have more energy, so pause for a second. This is another uh, law of thermodynamics that energy can never be created or destroyed. So we look at that concept, that, you know, that statement, and you look at Jeremiah chapter one, where it says, um, where it says, 
you know, before um, you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, right? I knew you. So just, I, I want you to just sort of, this is where I'm coming from. So anyway, before we were even formed in our mother's womb, we already have been set apart. So we've already been, we had some kind of relationship with Yahoo. Yeah. Um, yes. there's, a, there's a couple of verses in Isaiah uh, 46 that says, I knew you before you were conceived. I have carried you from the womb. Even now to your gray hair and old days, I have carried you. I will keep you and I will carry you and things like that. You know, he from conception, he has kept you and has carried you ever since all along. Yeah. Even when you're old and gray hair, he's still carrying you and he will carry you all the way through. Right. Uh, while, while we're talking, I'll go get the, the, the verses and read them for you. Please, please. And, and while you're doing that, I want to add to what you were saying. And this is where we have to understand, and this is where the idea, well, not idea, it's scripturally based. We know that we are a three-part being. You know, yeah. in Second Thessalonians, Paul says, and I would have you brethren to, you know, be preserved holy, your yes. soul, spirit. So that we have a spirit man that is really let's use the word energy right mm -hmm. and and this is where i'm coming from this is where i'm trying to attach that that scripture is the law of thermodynamics says energy can never be created or destroyed right and let me know brother have you found it okay i found it listen to what it says wonderful listen to me house of Yaakov, and all you who remain from the house of israel you whom I have upheld since you were conceived and had carried since your birth, even now to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. To whom can you complain? Wow. Beautiful. Right? Yes. In That's Isaiah 46. <laughs> Did you say Isaiah 46? Yes, three to five. Um, how, 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 do you think it's a coincidence that it's Psalm 46 that we're also talking about? <laughs> no, there's no <laughs> So wonderful. Thanks for sharing that, brother. And so we, we understand this, this idea of energy that can never be created or destroyed. Um, and the next part of this law says objects at higher elevations have more energy. And look at, let me play this. This means that objects must speed up as they fall, and objects must slow down as they go up. Oh, did you catch that? Yeah, why? We know that Adam and Eve fell from that uh -huh. higher, um, I don't know what you want to call it, heaven on earth, the Eden, that enclosure. Yeah. And so for us to go back to Eden, to go back and worship, we have to slow down. We oh. need to be still if oh. we want to go higher. You see? Yeah. See, little yes. things like this catch my attention. Little things like yeah. this. Yeah. So now you can, you can think of that and practically apply it so if you're brother you you have mentioned the acronym to busy what is it uh -huh. again? <laughs> being under satan's yoke there you go and we live in a world where we are fast-paced busy so if yes. we want to heal we want to restore we need to slow down and yeah. it's a it's a concept it's a truth that the scripture has always it's always been in psalm 46 even before yeah. they discovered the law of thermodynamics yeah so adding that there just tells you that this is not just a uh you know a a 
religion or a spiritual thing. This is also even now, you know, the scientific community knows that, right? So what, what other thing can we add to appreciation of be still? And we've, we've touched on this last Tuesday, but I think it's worth kind of rehashing it again. So we talked about the diaphragmatic breathing. And what it is, it's using our diaphragm to inhale or exhale. And um, actually, when we are in a state of rest, you you probably notice when we are asleep or sleeping, probably not when you're sleeping, but when you're falling asleep, you've noticed that you're breathing diaphragmatically. Yeah. And what that is, is a diaphragm is something that is a, this, again, this dome-shaped muscle, and it's located just below our heart and lungs. So look at the word heart, and if you were to put the H at the end, it is earth, yes? Yes. And it's, we know that the heart and the lungs is like partners, you know, they're right next to each other, because the lungs, as we know, is the breath, the oxygen processor that puts the oxygen into the heart, right? Yeah. So it's the ruach breathed upon the nostrils of man, right? Yeah. And the fact that this diaphragm muscle is dome-shaped, I'm going to go back to that picture. I don't know if you can see it, but this picture shows yeah. the diaphragm muscle looking like a dome, and how it relaxes and contracts. And when we are looking at the scripture, and you look at the word Eden, the garden of enclosure, doesn't that yeah. look like an enclosed, uh, yeah. something yeah. you can enclose? And when you use your diaphragm for breathing, what you are doing is um, you are maximizing your oxygen intake. It's like, it's like taking your cells out to the beach and getting a fresh breeze of air <laughs> or, or going to the top of the mountains and just inhaling all of that beautiful oxygen. So this yes. is everything that I've mentioned so far is actually an act of love to ourselves, to ourselves. Yeah. Right? When we don't slow down, we are abusing ourselves. When we're not breathing, using diaphragmatic breathing, and we're using, we're 70% of the time, we're using our uh, uh, sympathetic system, which is the survival system that we have, that Yahuwah built in there for survival purposes, not to walk in it. <laughs> we are to walk, you know, in the cool of the day. We are to walk in a relaxed, in shalom, right? Yeah. This, is the, this, this is the way he designed our bodies. This is the way. So I, I, I understand that we can't, you know, that we have to breathe um, using the sympathetic, system from time to time because that gets us you know healthy stress is good for us so when we are doing where we're engaged in healthy stress it's good for us because it helps us focus right uh -huh. task ahead okay so we've we've explored two concepts about being still this is another concept that just is another beautiful design that yahuwah has installed in our bodies we have um this network this system that the neuroscientist would term default mode network uh -huh. let you know dr leaf she coins this as mental shabbat <laughs> so oh. just like we literally observe shabbat where we cease from everything we rest and we're not just, you know, just empty rest. We're, 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 we have ceased because we are ready. We are getting ready to be filled with the Ruach, with the, with the word of Yahuwah, right? 
So what is this default mode network? Um, we know that the brain is in a constant state of, of I don't want to word that, I don't want to use that word busy now, brother. <laughs> it's uh-huh. always processing. It does not stop. The brain doesn't stop. Um, even when we're asleep, it is actually when the brain becomes mostly engaged in, um, you know, in um, uh, cleaning mode. So even in the state of rest, our brain is highly busy creating, you know, um, all the uh, serotonin that we're going to need for the next day and stuff like that. So what happens is when, and and I put that in there for us to appreciate how busy our, our brain is. The minute you wake up and that bit of light hits the cornea of your eyes, right? That output or input of light hits photoreceptors, 130 million of them. And specifically, there's 125 million rods of types of photoreceptors. And these rods in our... um, in the back of our eyes, they're the ones responsible for processing signals from the environment. Uh Frequency, whatever it is, um, light, um, um, everything that we don't even unconsciously know of, right? And then the other part of that is we also have cones that are responsible for, they're called color cones, and there's about 6 million photoreceptors. So when the output hits this photoreceptors, it now travels through our optic nerve and it connects. So get this, all of this is being processed in a, in a quantum speed. So from 130 million um, sensory input, being, uh, our photoreceptors are being activated, right? The brain now has to, has to amount or dilute it or make it so that it will only connect to uh, 1 million neurons in our brain in our thalamus. So our brain is busy. But when our, even though, and that's just happening through the input of light, that's just happening when you, when you wake up in the morning and you're starting to realize it's morning and it's time to get up. What more? What more is when you start to move your legs and you start to get up off of bed and start walking like, you know? But here's the beautiful thing about our brain is that by choice, when we turn off the outside world, this is actually something that we all are capable of. I think you mentioned this in the past, brother. You you said that, listen, I'm listening to you, but yeah. you don't know that there are background music or background noise oh. happening in, down the street, but I yeah. am selectively listening to you. I'm not even hearing them. I'm not even, they're not even impacting me. So it's the same concept. When we choose to turn off the outside world, this default mode network automatically switches on. No effort required. All we have to do is make a choice to turn off the world. And what happens is this DMN, it it turns on your inner world, your spirit man, let's call that. And physiologically, what happens is when DMN or default mode network turns on, we have an increased blood flow that goes up to the front part of our brain, right? And we know that that is the thinking part of the brain. That is the decision making. That is the, that is the highest part of the brain, right? And so when we are resting, when we are doing a mental Shabbat, right? We are flowing blood. We are putting blood flow at the highest into the frontal part of our brain and it impacts the attention networks in the brain. So you see a little bit of brain image here and you see that this is a, a, uh, a brain scan where the default mode network is actually turned on. You see it? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it. And, and so here's the interesting part. So what, what is the default? What does the default mode network involve? So let's just call it DMN, okay? So when you have the DMN, 
what you end up doing is turning off the world and turning off the current task that you're performing, whatever it is, and you end up thinking about others. Look at that. Thinking about yourself. Remembering the past and envisioning the future. Wow. Wow, look at that. Thinking yeah. about the Kodashim. Thinking about you, yourself. What is it that you need to surrender to Yahuwah right now? That you need to ask to wash from, to repent from? What is it that, you know... Um, Remembering the past, what are the past victories Yahuwah has allowed me to have and walk? So to give me the strength and the hope to endeavor whatever it is I'm doing now. And what is it, the future, the vision that I have? Right? Like, look, this is all automatic. We are beautifully designed for this, brother, sisters. Yeah. And this is the cool part. When the, but by the time the DMN is deactivated, um, memory encoding takes place. And what they have found is that when you are, when you process information through the DMN network, you have a better memory, long-term memory consolidation happening in your brain, a successful long-term memory consolidation, right? Wow. And, and again, and this is, what what is it that's key about this as well? Studies have shown that in a group setting, right, when a group is reading or listening to a story or watching a movie together, their DMNs are highly correlated with each other. Look at that. So there's yes. this correlation happening. And what's happening is because of that correlation, comprehension is, is very good as well. And it's not so much the, the language aspect, and it's not the auditory per se, because what happens is when the story is scrambled or the story is presented in a language they don't understand, the, the DMN does not correlate as well. Okay. So, so now, brother, I was trying to remember this, but I'm sure you will be able you you will be able to speak better when it comes to this. When I think of this correlation of DMN um, in a group setting, right? I think of why Paul okay. says, you know, when you're going to speak in a language that is unknown, if you're going to operate in the gift of the tongues, make sure someone there is going to interpret what you just said, right? And, and look at the story of Ezra 9 and 10, when, when publicly they did a prayer of repentance, confessions, right? Weeping. Okay. As a public, they all exercise their default mode network. What I couldn't remember, brother, is there, there is a time in history where, um, you know, they, they had, the just children of Israelites had forgotten the Hebraic original language. And someone came in and started to translate for them, and they took advantage of that, and they became... What was that again, brother? That story? The Targum. Which one? The Targum. Ah. The Targums. The T-R-G-U-M. Okay. Yes. And they later evolved into what was called the scribes in the days of Mephia. There you go. There you go. And... And so, brother, think of, think of what we just talked about as far as DMN. If you are telling a story, but the, the language is different, the, the default mode network, the ability to retain, to consolidate, put that into long-term memory is impacted if it is being uh, done in such a way that people don't understand the language. Oh. Makes sense, right? And that's why, again, Shaul said something that we need to put together. In Romans, he said, the Ruach is in you, and he does things for you even unconsciously. He prays with groanings and moanings that you cannot understand. Mm. So, because it's resident inside of you, mm -hmm. if it does that 
the main thing that you're talking about, even though you cannot understand the language, the spirit does. Mm. The robot does. Well, and if he, he reveals the hidden things of God to you. These are all parts of why uh, the Ruach was sent to us. Read, read John 15 and 16, you will see. Mm. John, do you want to go there? Well, let's play. Let me read okay. parts of John 16 for you, and okay. you'll hear what she said would be part of what the Ruach is going to do. Yes. So it's something that we need to know that when we have the Ruach, we should expect the unexpected and expect the, the miraculous because it will it, he says this um let me just put a little brighter light here for a second one second sure okay i'm reading from john 16 and he says this now I am going to him, speaking of the Father, who sent me, yet none of one I'll ask of me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your own good, or it is expedient for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter or the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in regard to sin because men do not believe in me in regard to righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. Mm -hmm. And in regard to judgment because the prince of this world is judge. And now he says this, I have so much more to say to you now, but you cannot bear it. Mm -hmm. But when he, the rock of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and mm -hmm. he will tell you what is yet to come. So in other words, the Ruach will give you revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Ruach will take all that is mine and will make it known to you. Wow. So that, that's the, the Messiah is saying this. And in Romans 6, Paul talks about where the Ruach himself will pray for you with groanings and, yes. and that you don't understand, you know? Yes. So for us, this is the truth. We take comfort in that. Right at the same time, do we be on guard then, brother, that when you know when when it, it can be used as a like like you said the scribes and the pharisees um you know they can steal the glory or you know they can be in the way right yes. it can be in the way but we just be on guard for that right thank you for sharing that brother you are welcome and so when when our dmn is activated we are prime so dmn again when we're doing our mental shabbat and all we have to do is 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 don't like turn off the world right mm -hmm. and then we are primed for comprehension remembering and do you see yeah. how easily we can be charged by the seven spirits of the ruach the ruach yeah. of understanding Wisdom, counsel, might, knowledge, and reverence, right? Yeah. And why is this so key? Because when you have this type of mental disposition, this is the preamble or this will lead to manifestation, physical yeah. manifestation. How is that possible? The question is how? Thanks for asking. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I have myself. <laughs> but um, the next concept that we're going to talk about in the be still, be still, is what, again, the neuroscientist would term quantum xeno effect. So QZE, quantum xeno effect. So what is this? This is really the power of paying attention. And 
when you pay attention, and again, this is from, we've already, we've just turned off the world. We are in DMN, default mode network. And now we are paying attention to what the Ruach is teaching us about whatever the circumstance we're in. And what happens when we do that, that attention, that act of focus, it actually has physiological impact on our brain. It changes our brain. So this, that's QZE, is a, apparently a well-verified law in quantum physics. And it is key to understanding how we can systematically alter the brain's response to the environmental inputs. And guess who's controlling the brain response? We are. Remember, Sister Yusana, we were talking about that earlier this morning, right? Why are we, you know, wasting energy and, and investing energy in places where we don't have control over it, right? And so, I know she's on mute. So the, the mental act of focusing attention, this is what it can do to our brains, okay? It can actually create or pave or hold brain circuits that will be associated to what you are focusing on, okay? So simply by speculating or forecasting or thinking about an experience, what happens is we create the same brain circuitry as if we've experienced it physically. So let, let's try to like, how, how is that possible? Let's look at the concept of pain, right? So pain versus pain relief. So what this means based on the ability, the proven concept of quantum Zeno effect is that when, if you, if we have an expectation, look at that, or hope, expectation of pain relief, we can elicit focusing of attention on the actual experiences of pain relief that are associated with our brain, with the patterns that are happening in our brain. And when we do that enough times, we focus on that experience of pain relief, our brain will actually associate that part that you're focusing on. It will make it dynamically stable. You will experience what you are hoping for, what you're expecting. And so in other words, you have, you can be your own, we are our own brain surgeon. Uh -huh. This is called self-directed neuroplasticity, right? Look at the power. What, why I want to go slow on this, because you will hear of stories like this, you know, um, you know, people and on YouTube or whatever that people who have, um, okay, I'll give you an example. I know of a doctor, his name is Dr. Cruz. Um, Dr. Jack Cruz, he wanted to, um, he wanted to um, prove a point, scientifically prove a point. So um, because of the, the, um, the severity of his experiment. He cannot experiment it on anyone else but himself. So he tried it on himself. Uh, Dr. Cruz is a, is a back surgeon, right? So what he did, he, he went under the knife so he can actually um, put a surgical procedure on himself. You know, so he obviously allowed a doctor to do whatever it is that they need to do on himself. So he does this and he says to the doctors, I don't want any pain. What do you call those things? Um, what do you call them? Anesthetic. You got anesthetic. Your anesthesia, sorry. The anesthetic. That's right. So I don't, don't give me any anesthetics. I will do this without it. Okay. So obviously for him to get into even to do this, he's obviously very convinced of what he's about to do. So he does this and they open him up close him up. He, this man is obviously in pain, obviously in pain. 
but he says, you know what? I'm not going to do it. He's so focused. He's, he didn't get any anesthetics. He comes home and he puts a bucket of ice in his tub and he jumps into it. Oh. And hours later, no pain. Oh. Well, obviously part of the reason too is what you call the cold thermogenesis. But the point is we, we don't, we don't really, we don't have the same appreciation of what we're talking about right now, where we can control even our pain relief because we have not practiced it in the past. If you think about it, the minute we get a headache, we, 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 um, go to Tylenol. Exactly. We pop in a, a bottle. I shouldn't say bottle, but a, a, a tablet, right? We, yeah. we do not allow the pain to teach us something or the experience to teach us something. So what is it? If you don't use it, you lose it. Lose it. Exactly. So this is why it seems so foreign to us when we talk about these concepts, but modern science is bringing to our awareness using the the model of the brain the the capability that you and i have this is not a a brain imaging or concept that is only happening to a specific group of race or people or you know stature rich people these are the design of our brain that the way yahuwah gave to all of us if you are made from him you would have this <laughs> right and well. So, like the idea of fasting, like Sister Yusana was sharing earlier too. When we say the word fasting, again, people don't cannot really comprehend what that means. To them, their perception of fasting is I'm gonna die. Right? But they don't they don't realize, they don't know, they haven't paid attention, they haven't researched, nobody has enlightened them with the healing power, the restor restorative, right? the mechanism, the cleansing mechanism that's built in to our very own body, right? And so I cite the article here. Um, but so, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, again, the power of imagination, the power of visualization. Um, the brain cannot tell what's real and not real. So if we visualize the process of healing, what's happening is you're actually telling your brain you're telling your brain to, to make the same brain circuitry as if you're, you've actually done it. So what happens is it predisposes you. You get it? It predisposes yes. you to receive, to simply receive what is now you have hoped for and you're expecting, right? It's a beautiful thing, right? That law of attraction that we were talking about, the law of polarity, right? Yeah. So... So I just wanted to highlight a few parts of, you know, why, why does Yahuwah say, be still and know? And why does he use the word, in the word still in Hebrew, he used the word Rafa, uh -huh. which we know is healing. Uh -huh. So there's so much more to it, you know, it's, you know, and we just simply need to be still and pay attention. And... Uh -huh. The mechanisms are already in place. We don't need to pay. We don't need to go and, and apply for a loan. We don't need to fly to Mexico. We don't need to go to heaven. We don't, you know, we don't need to do any of that stuff. It's already built inside of us. Right? So let's move on to the second part of Psalm 46. And no, no, right? Why is yeah. it so key for us to know because if we know yahuwah like he is commanding us to do we know his son yahusha right we know him through his son yahusha then when we know yahusha then we know who we are you know so when we know yes. yahuwah we know who we are in mashiach yes. right <laughs> and and so this is the next concept and that that statement that i just said there that is that is a huge statement we think we know who we are so we think that 
if you look at it, there is the us. Remember that picture that I showed you last the last discussion where I showed you the the circle, the middle, the inner circle, the middle circle, and that outer circle. And do you remember yeah. that that there's that little person in the center? Mm -hmm. Before we surrender our life to Yahusha, that space is occupied by us, by self. And if you rearrange the word self, I think it's flesh, isn't it? Or self flesh, maybe. But it's but it's flesh. Oh. <laughs> and what happens is we think we believe, we are led to believe um, that that is who we think we are because, you know, this is all we've ever known since we were born. But then we don't realize that while we were growing up, the, we are all, um, we've been, we are all in the same bucket here where we are all predisposed to the lies of the forefathers. We've inherited nothing but lies. So if that's what Jeremiah claims, then we have to question who we are, right? Yeah. And so that, that's my point. How, how is it that we would know who we are without knowing, without looking at the son whom Yahuwah sent? Yeah. So the, the, the be still and know that I am Yahuwah, this is a call really to point to his son, and it really is so that we can know who we truly are. Remember, Jeremiah once says, before we were formed in the mother's womb, we, Yahuwah already knew us, right? Mm -hmm. And so here's the other thing I was thinking about. Um, you know, we, we look at, you know, Paul talks about this concept of looking at a mirror, right? Mm -hmm. And when we were having our Shabbat this Saturday, this last Shabbat, Rish, sometimes we learn from the mouth of babes. <laughs> she said something that made me really want to steal the idea. So I'm stealing it. So she said that you really cannot look at yourself without a mirror. Right? Look at yourself. You, how can you know how you look like without a mirror? So the mirror, we look at a mirror and then we can see a reflection of our image, right? But even in the reflection of our image, we, have, we know ourselves, brother and sisters, right? That the, the left side of our eyes that's reflected on the mirror is not the right side of where my left eye is. Yeah. So even by looking at the mirror, the mirror highlights to us that we are messed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? So not only will the mirror tell us if we have, you know, a, a, an imperfection on our face, but by nature, the mirror will, will reflect to us. I know you're looking at yourself, but just so you know, you're, you're, this is the right you, but you're not the right you in a sense. What do I mean by that? Do you know yeah, that, <laughs> do you know that our you remember we were talking about the law of duality, like the nature of duality? So after the fall, we have now opened ourselves up to the law of duality. So now there's left, right, up, down, right? Where be prior to the fall, there's, I believe, it's just a kindness. Uh -huh. And that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was just put there as a test. But even today, looking at our physiological makeup, um, why is it that our right side of the brain controls the left side of our body? Like literally. Why is it that our left side of the brain controls the right side of the body? Like, you know, so when you're looking at a mirror, even the mirror is telling you, yeah, your left is not really my left kind of thing. And so who is the mirror? Paul says, like, who is the, who are we looking at? It's Yahusha, right? Yes. 
And and by looking at Yahusha, it shows us who we are, a glimpse of who we are. And the, it, it reminds us that while we are in this flesh, we need to depend on him because we got it wrong physiologically as well. Yeah. Right? So, <clears throat> you know, so one of the things when I, when I was looking at this, we have to, we have to come to terms. We all have to agree that when Yahuwah says, know who I am, he really is incomprehensible. Yeah, <laughs> and have you heard of this brother, um, sisters too, that I've heard this from, I think it was Chuck Missler. He mentioned that some of the rabbis, they, they were looking at Genesis chapter one and the way it was written, you know, um, you know, and Yahuwah said, or, and Elohim said, let there be, you know, and yeah. each time he, that was, um, noted in the scripture that that represents one dimension. Have you heard yeah. of that? So, yeah, yeah. So we know that we, there's multiple dimensions. Like science is saying that there's at least 10 or 11. Yeah, well, uh, a, a famous 14th century rabbi yes. named Nachmanides, not Maimonides, who was Rambam, another guy. Mm. He said, he's the guy who discovered that, and he said there are 10 dimensions. Mm, there you go. Yes, just by looking at the text. Yeah. Right? And, and the reason I highlight that to us, because yes, while there is an invitation through Yahusha to know Yahuwah so we, we can also know ourselves, we have to come to terms that he is incomprehensible. And by looking at chapter one of Genesis alone, and this is a... I just want to show you visually what I mean. So there, we're looking at 10 dimensions, right? This is a short yeah. video, but just to show you. This one dimension is basically, sorry, sorry, I should say, zero dimension is one point, this little dot right there. Right? So let's move on. Double the points, and you have one dimension. Oh, okay, double the points, one dimension. Double the points again. And you have two dimensions. Double the points again, and you have three dimensions. Hmm. It gets complicated. Look at it. Double the points yet again, And you have four dimensions. Wow. <clears throat> That's just four dimensions. Yeah. Skeptical. You're watching this on a flat two-dimensional computer monitor. In two dimensions, it's not possible to have three axes, each of which is 90 degrees to the other two. Yet we accept this picture as a representation of three dimensions displayed on a two-dimensional monitor. In three dimensions, it is not possible to have four axes, each of which is 90 degrees to the other three. Yet as with three dimensions on a two-dimensional monitor, we can accept that this is a representation of four dimensions. If you remove any one of the four axes, you will go back to three axes, each of which is 90 degrees to the other two. Let me show you when you doubled the points again. And you have five dimensions. See that? You get the idea of what I was trying to... Uh, yeah. Yes. That is that's the prism. <laughs> the prism has many lights, right? Well, yeah. The prism yeah. reflects light, like okay. lights. Did I give you my notes again? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. like it's like the first time, one three dimensions. Go ahead, brother. Every time you see, and Yahuwah said, and he ended it 
with the word good at the end, that was one dimension. Right. So we have those 10 dimensions in creation that we, we never could understand it until we have uh, some person who read it in Hebrew. Because mm -hmm. in Hebrew and Palio, it, it, it is plain as day for us to see it. But when they translate the Bible into English, we lose all, all those things. So we are, we are we're used to our three-dimension world until Paul wrote um, um, Ephesians. That's right. And he introduced us to a fourth dimension. And we were, as believers, we, are, we were thinking that, that we had one, one dimension up on the unbelievers until we learn that the Bible is telling us at least 10. And scholars who are studying the word now are saying there's a possibility of 12 dimensions. I heard. If Paleo Hebrew, there's 12 dimensions. I heard. And, and to me, I just wanted to show that because, I mean, I can probably draw the three dimension. <laughs> can you comprehend and try to draw the, no, I... the five? I mean, unless you use a computer, but like, and your brother, you're saying 12 dimensions. I've heard that as well. Yes, 12. And so, that is more, uh, more and more make sense because 12 is the Yahuwah's perfect number of government. That's right. Yes. So 12 dimensions will make a lot of sense. Yes. When you take into consideration the shape and dimensions of the new Yerushalayim coming down, 12 dimension may look, may, may look so small compared to what's really happening. Absolutely. And d going with the number 12, uh, in the physiological makeup of, our, of ourselves, we have 12 cranial nerves, right? Mm -hmm. That is connected to our 12 energy points in our bodies that is connected mm -hmm. To the twelve, uh, uh, what do you call it, tectonic plates on the Earth, and that yes. tectonic plates is connected to the twelve um, constellations. I think that's what you call it, right, or something like that. It's it, yeah. So you, we are we are we are now more, uh, more certain of twelve than ten. That's right. That's right. There's that governmental. Yes. Yeah. Concept there, um, Sister Yusana, you were saying something else. No, no, I, I just want to turn on my water to <laughs> okay. To start. Okay, so yeah, the Yahuwah, he is incomprehensible, and yet he extends the invitation that we can know him. That really should humble us. You know, humble us and and he is you know we we put him whether we admit it or not in a box we really do yeah. <laughs> we yeah. right and he is you cannot explain him you know when 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 the scientist community when they say electromagnetic when they say radiation that is, when they say energy, that is, they're looking at a shadow, really. They, they don't really see it. Yeah. So I think in Isaiah, when it says Yahuwah is inv invisible, okay. it's true. It's true. All of these things that we're studying, these are, the, 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 the scientist community have been blessed with the resources and the intelligence and the time to do it. But they're only looking at the shadow of things, yeah. right? And so when we look at electromagnetic radiation or force, you know, energy emitted from space is electromagnetic. And we can understand that with looking at the concept of light and sound, right? And, yeah. you know, and... Light is really um, both uh, an electric and magnetic. So if you look at this here, I don't know if you, I don't want to make it large, but the one that 
the one that goes um, from Y, you know, the one that goes um, vertically, that goes low and up, that is the electricity. Magnetic magnetism is the one that goes horizontally, right? Okay. Yeah. And and the, the top here is called crest. That is crest. Uh -huh. And so light and sound is really energy. It really is. It's electromagnetic. And both are made of waves. The difference is light is made of electric and magnetic fields and sound is a wave of air pressure. But oh. everything in the known universe, including you and I, this laptop, this this uh, platform, our bodies, you know, quantum mechanics has stated that we are made from waves, oh. right? So this is why I was showing uh, this part last time, and I'm gonna just show it again for a second. So if you recall, this road. Uh, I have to talk to every guy is following. I'm back. Oh, sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Um, so, if you recall, uh, at the earlier, the first time I showed this, there is a a source of the wave or the the one who initiates it, and we know that that is Yahuwah. Everything he is the source of everything, right? So, what I wanted to highlight here is when he initiates. When he sends his, his electrical and magnetic signal, and when, if you envision a rope, at the end of the rope, you see? At the end of the rope, the way when he initiates um, when he starts something, he does it because it will reflect back to him. Does that make sense? And what I'm trying to say is that's why Yahuwah, he is energy, he is spirit, and he seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So it, when, as I was explaining in the past, when he breathed the breath of life to Adam's nostrils, and Adam inhaled, yeah. And, you know, he naturally, just like that electromagnetic wave or that rope at the end of the rope, it is reflected back to the one who gives it. So he, we exhale, we respond to that initiation, right? And I, and I think of verses like, Yahuwah appeared to him from far away. Jeremiah 31 3. And what does he say? I have loved you with an everlasting love. I love that. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Right? This this is, you know, I, I try to, you know, just something, I try to explain something that is invisible in a way that, you know is visible so that we can kind of little bit comprehend the mm -hmm. point i'm saying is we have we are designed to worship him is what i'm saying mm -hmm. when he initiated that breath of life we have no other way unless we go outside of design by design we are made to respond back and he has you know he has given us his love letter he has pursued us with everything that has made us who we are to be today. That is the everlasting love and his faithfulness. He's continued to pursue us. And he mm -hmm. says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares Yahuwah. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future mm -hmm. and a hope. So, if we are designed to if we are designed to worship him we have no choice because the breath that we have comes from him so when he initiated that electromagnetic wave 
when it reaches the end of the rope, which is us, we respond naturally to that. Unless there's an unless, unless something gets in the way, right? And I want to show this again because I kind of show this and I kind of, unless something gets in the way, what happens? If the end of the rope is fixed and can't move, the reflected wave is flipped upside down. Okay, look what happens in quantum mechanics. When there is a, a, a fixed, something blocks your response, what happens to the wave? Do you see it? It fell yeah. down, right? So same thing with what happened again in the garden. They fell, right? They fell. Um, and, and I just want to continue on with the other two verses because they're so beautiful before I move forward with that thought. We love, we have to remember this, we love him, but because he, we're able to do that because he first loved us. Again, he's the initiator, right? <laughs> And 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from Yah. And whoever loves has been born of Yah and knows Yah. Anyone who does not love does not know Yah, because Yah is love. You see that if we are made from Yah, Yahuwah, then we are love. That's why we can love him, because he first loved us. Hallelujah! Right? <laughs> And there's no way around it. This is by design. The reason why we need to know this is because if there is, if we are not, if we are functioning outside of our design, there is a blockage that we need to identify and cast out, right? So, and that is by the strength of Mashiach. And I'll show you how using that wave illustration, okay? So when there was a block, what happened? The wave went down, fell down. So instead of, of, of moving upwards, it went down. Here, but Yahuwah sent his son to be delivered up, to be crucified and raised from the dead so that this body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. I want you to look at that word crucified right? When that word crucify, you can almost look at it as amplify, okay? The word amplify, if I, I found this word amplify in the original language.com, and in Hebrew, um, I don't know if this is paleo or, um, or the modern Hebrew, but it is mafil po, raised up here, amplified. And in Latin, amplificare, make large. So just keep those two things in mind. So Yahusha, the, the word crucify is amplify, okay? And when we are redeemed by the blood of the lamb, look what happens. Okay, we, we fell down, right? We, we fell because something got in the way. Okay. If two waves collide, they pass right through each other. Okay, watch what happens when our amplified Yahusha was sent. Look at that Yahusha. When and the two Yahusha. waves are on top of each other, they can momentarily cancel each other out. Look what happens. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. What happens? There's that exchange. Did you see what happened? What happened is when... That's why I wrote here, Yahusha sent his son. He's that wave that's, that's coming up, meeting us that is waving, that is at the bottom. And he delivered up to be crucified, right? To take our place. And when we are redeemed by the blood of the lamb, he puts us back on top of the wave. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Is it just me or am I, <laughs> right? And so now there's this beautiful exchange because Yahusha took our place. So now when we were below here, now we're on top. Yahusha took our place. And look what happens. 
now that we are in Yahusha, we are, so he, he doesn't stop there. He took our place. But as our Redeemer, look what happens as our Redeemer. Okay. So we are at the top of the wave. Look what happens. When the two waves are on top of each other, they can also momentarily strengthen one another. Look what happens. Amplified. You see? Yep. So because we are in Yahusha, we are once again redeemed by the blood of Yahusha. We are put back at the top of the wave. Now, Yahusha as well is, he is he, we know that he is our, he is our strength. And when you yeah. see the two top waves collide, what happens is it gets amplified. You see? Do you see what mm -hmm. happens? So when, yeah. when <laughs> this is why I'm so amazed. He, he doesn't, um, we, can, we can visually see that there, this is by design. What Yahusha has done for us, he took our place because there was a blockage. And that blockage caused us to vibrate low, to go. And then he took our place. And then what happened is while we are on top of the wave, because we've been redeemed back, Yahusha becomes our strength, our amplifier. He is the one who enlarges our border, our consciousness. Do you see that? The word amplify? Yeah. You see? Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's amazing stuff. And, you know, he, Yahusha, is the light of the world, and Yahusha is the word. He is both the light and the sound. Right? We were talking about that, right? That the that, that waves... That we were showing you what the waves are like as far as light and sound. And what is what is the difference? Um, so I was showing you sound waves. What's the difference between light and sound waves? And this is, um, I would say, thank, thank Yahuwah for this difference. <laughs> so the sound waves have a larger distance between the waves. Okay, so... Um, light has a smaller wave, okay? And so we're going to try to understand what I mean by that. And just keep in mind the word, the scripture that says, faith comes by hearing, okay? Faith comes by hearing. So if we take the same video and we go to, um, okay. So before the fall, okay, before the fall, and this is the reason why we can hear things even if there is an obstacle in the way. Okay. So remember I showed you... Um, yeah, we saw it last time, yeah. Right. And there, there's an obstacle in the way. So you're looking at this um, object, okay? And what happens is because the waves of sound... Because the wave of sound is has um, greater distance in waves even though there's a an obstacle in the way we can still hear can hear, we can hear yeah. right so that's why it's a provision that yahuwah gave us so we now because right now our our ability to see is distorted we can only see in part but yahuwah says faith comes by hearing you see, the distance between the, the difference between light and sound is this, okay? So we know that prior to the fall, we were flesh and bone, right? Mm -hmm. We were light beings. Our skin, the Hebrew word for skin and light is or. It's basically the same thing. Post the post fall, we are now flesh and blood, right? So we know that we are we have biophotons. We've talked about it in the past, right? Yeah. And here's what I wanted to um, introduce now. If you look at the word Lucifer, or also known, and we know, brother, and I'm sure you have come across this and you agree with me, Lucifer was never really in the original manuscript, in the older manuscript. No, no, no. That only came in the Latin Vulgate in 550 AD. There we go. I had a question mark, but I'm going to remove that question mark now. 
Latin body. So before yeah. that word appeared, it was hella, right? Yes. Right, right. So, but the word Lucifer, interestingly, in Latin means light bearer, uh -huh. light bringing. Okay. And, and if you look at Ezekiel, it says that you were the anointed, sorry, Ezekiel 28, 14, you were the anointed cherub who covers. So yeah. in Hebrew, that's kaka or saka, to hedge, to fence about, to shut in, to cover. In other words, Lucifer was a light bearer. Yahusha is the light. Huge difference. Yeah. Right? So we're, what I'm saying is we were also light beings. We were light beings. But yeah. what happened to us? So now, remember we we're talking about flesh and bone and flesh and blood. So yeah. it's interesting. What's interesting about our blood cells? Okay. Blood, stir, blood cells is basically a carrier of oxygen. Yeah. Oxygen, breath, or it also is a light bearer. Do you see that? Light yeah. and life. It really is the same thing. So it, my point is when, because Lucifer or, you know, this Hallel, he was expelled from heaven because of his pride. And yeah. he got jealous. There's this jealousy over Adam, right? Yeah. And he couldn't get through Adam, so he went through via Eve, right? And then what happened was, all of a sudden, light became flesh and blood. So now we found ourselves in the same predicament as, it's like we've, does that, does that make sense? It's like we've, we've gone down to, instead of, you know, this blood, this flesh and blood somehow is now a carrier of oxygen, right? And it's interesting that the Lucifer race is actually a, a scientific term. It's a, it's a type of enzyme, yeah, right? So, so, you know, th this is why you ever wonder why our blood vessels appear blue on our skin? If you look at our skin. Oh. And sometimes you have some blood veins, blood vessels that look like it's blue. And the yeah. simple answer to that is because when blood is deoxygenated, it's, it turns into deep purple that appears blue. But if our blood cell is rich in oxygen, it is bright red, right? So, so what happens is the blood that enters our heart is basically dead blood. It's blue blood. And then when it leaves our, when it, when the oxygen pumps oxygen, when the lungs pumps oxygen into the heart, it refills that blood cells with rich oxygen. And then the, the blood cells come out of our heart rich in oxygen. So rich, full of light. So even in the heart process, there's a picture, there's a picture of resurrection there. You see that? It enters yeah. dead. And then it comes out alive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, why is it that Yahusha's blood, in Leviticus it says, it's for the atonement for our souls. Hmm. It's a covering for our soul, or atonement, or at, if you look at the word atonement, it's at, you know, meant to be one with yeah. him. But something happened. So before the fall, we were light beings, our skins were light. After the fall, mankind have different colored skins, oh. right? So now this is why I was showing to you know, your sister, Rosanna was talking about a prism, right? So we were once light beings. And again, this is all part of the know, knowing, you know, be still and know. Why do we need Yahusha? Like, this is where the question comes, right? When we were, once we were light beings, but something happened that bent our light, right? Yeah. What happens, look at this prism. 
And if you look at the idea of bending, isn't that a natural form of worship? Inclination to worship, right? Okay. So look at look at the white light that shines through this prism at an angle. Okay? And look at the word angle. Look at the word. It really is angel too. But when this light being, there's an obstacle in the way, and that's a prism. What does the prism remind you of, brother? It's uh, rainbow. The rainbow. Well, sorry, I should say like the, the this triangular shape is what I was meaning. Um, if you look mm -hmm. at the the symbolisms of the occult. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So my, my point is something happened. We were light beings, and the, this prism, this this triangular glass prism got in the yeah. way. And what happens is it bent. That it, it's a trapezoid shape. Oh, is it? Trapezoid. That's what that ah. is. Mm, tap trapezoid. Okay. Trapezoid. Excellent. Excellent. I want to show you something at 1337. Let me see if I can find it. 13. So this is what happens to... This is the same idea as quantum. In quantum mecha mechanics, this video illustrates um, the cars as as light. So what happens is, so these cars that you're going to see, they are light, but we know that light is composed of all the different colors combined together, right? But when they enter a material that is different or a prism, look what happens. Together. Look what happens. See? Yeah. They bend. They, they change direction. And they slow down. Did you notice that? Okay. So, remember we were talking about we are slowed down light? Remember? Yeah. We are congealed yeah. light, right? So, so, what I wanted to show you is something happened. Something got in the way. We had access to that light. We were light. But there's an obstacle that came in the way and it distorted our view and our eyes became that portal for the fall. And our ears is the portal of Yahuwah. Oh, I don't know how. Right? Yeah. yeah. And see, this little prism here, isn't it interesting too that we are made up of mostly carbons, like our flesh? Okay, that's why we're magnetized here on Earth. Without this flesh, we, we will float. So the reason yeah. why we are magnetized here on Earth is because we are made up of carbon. Carbon oh. has six protons, six electrons, six neutrons. Uh -huh. Hmm. What is the number of man? Six. Ridiculous. Hmm. Energy equals mass times the speed of light. So what I'm trying to show here is that we are simply slowed down light. Right? Yeah. Just like hello. Yeah. And he is a carrier of light and he lost his position. He was jealous of Adam because Adam was made special. He was never like that, right? Instead, he is yeah. a bearer of light only, right? Yeah. And <laughs> so what happens is because of this prism, this little prism, if you think about it, we are basically trapped in this prism. We are trapped in this uh, carbon suit. And I'll show you what yeah. I mean by that, okay? 1529. I'm going to just go to 1529. I'll show you 1529. So look at this. When we are, remember, we are light beings and we are yeah. put into this prism. I'm going to down. Right? Go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> This is light trying to come out. If the angle is shallow enough, there will be a total reflection of the wave. So, look at the prism. The light can't come out. This is how light stays inside fiber optic cables. Ah. You see that? Yeah. It cannot come out. Yeah. Although waves sometimes reflect completely, 
Yes, there is all. So, this is what I mean by we have been, we were flesh and bone turned to flesh and blood. And so, what happened is we are light beings trapped in this carbon made suit that has six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. Right? So, this is. And then the next word I have there is repent, and we can pause. That we can... That's what it says. That's what it says in Revelation. Um, that it's the number of men. Yeah. Six, six. Yes. Did you see it? Yeah. From... Yeah. It says this is the number of men. So and and mm-hmm. now you you line that up with what Paul is saying, brother and sister. Paul is saying there is a law of sin in our members you see that yeah. Yeah. so this is i guess what i'm what i'm so far we were talking about how to break down yahuwah's principles for healing and restoration right we we started off by being still and now we sort of we're going through the and know that i am yahuwah right and I, I sort of, and I, I do this, the way I'm trying to express this is that we were talking about what goes on in our brain in quantum speeds. We're talking quantum mechanics here. So we're talking, we're talking that what I'm saying is that we are, we are dimmed down or dumbed down light. You see? Yes. If, if we... I guess what I'm trying to express is we are so we are so capable. <laughs> Do you see what I'm trying to say? We are supernatural. We just haven't realized it because we are dimmed down, we are trapped. Yes. And we are led to believe that this is it. Right? Now remember, yes. remember what I told you about that thing? It's a trapezoid. Yes, now, okay, brother, now I get it. <laughs> I didn't, I thought you were just correcting me in my, uh, my, uh, oh, no. just letting you know. That's excellent. Trap, okay, I'm gonna have to write that down. Trapezoid, trapezoid, T R A E. Right? Is that how you said it? Oh, yeah. man, I haven't spelled it right. Wow. So, in the in the end, I just want to say, let's wake up. Now, when you read the scripture, you, when you read Ephesians, Colossians, when you see all of these, you know, the promises that seem so hard to reach. I mean, we can we have to be honest. We can we can even convince our conscious mind, which is only five percent of our entire consciousness, by the way, of what we're reading is true. Right? We can convince it. We can, out of a genuine heart. But do you know that our bodies, our bodies do not lie. Right? Our bodies just does not lie. So even though we say, um, okay, I'm, all, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm okay, or I'm believing in this, in the promises of the scripture, and then, you know, our body will say something else. Do you see my point? Our bodies are master communicators. So the idea is our bodies is the unconscious part. So now we need to realize that this unconscious part is what we need to to um, to minister to 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 get to know to get to know to convince, right? To remind who we are in Yahusha. I don't know. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. Yes. Now we know we're unconscious, but now we're conscious. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. In certain parts. Yeah. So, yeah, but Yahusha always said, Oh, you of little faith. Yes. And and then when Peter wanted to walk on the waters, and mm-hmm. he did walk, mm-hmm. and as soon as the fear came in, yes, he drowned. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And And brother, this is what I was... I remember Brother Shem so excited, and I know you are, even to this day, you are. 
walking on water. And I said to you, it is possible. Uh, I, am, I, am, I am hoping to do it during this life. <laughs> yeah. Brother, I know it sounds funny, but. No, yeah, exactly. See, that's the thing. It, it sounds so foreign, supernatural, yeah. but we're just discussing how supernatural we are. So there must be, if we are slow down light, if we are dumb down light, can we reverse that through Yahushua? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He is 100%. the awakening spirit. You were saying? I say 100% because Paul says, if that same spirit that raised Mashiach from the dead dwells in you, his spirit will quicken your mortal body. Hallelujah. See, quicken, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so now let, let's let's be honest. How come we haven't? Hmm. How, about, how come we haven't no. walked on water? And what it is is this, right? Why? Why? Two, two, two reasons for that. <laughs> what is it? We, we, are, we are fearful because we think uh, we make a fool of ourselves. Mm. That's number one. And number two, we we look like Peter does. Look at that and say, that's impossible. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, and me, I'm afraid of water because I don't swim. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, make, make for that. Well, you know what? We have a hour because we're special. We're unique. There's nobody else like us ever that ever existed from the beginning of time. So we have our own version of that water walking. Yeah. We have our own version, and it, and it is specially designed and reserved for us. And you know, I was going to say, we, we haven't really done a good job in convincing our brain, really. In other words, <laughs> we, our brain, remember, our brain, our bodies have been, have been preconditioned, have, been, have a memory that is based since we were young. You see, so yeah. we're having this new understanding and concept and, you know, so way, what I'm trying to say is we immerse ourselves, we convince ourselves, we continue to, to speak and repeat through repetition, right? We, yeah. we continue to imagine and we visualize the truth of the scripture. And remember, our brains cannot tell the difference, right? So... Yeah. So how you trick the brain or how you convince the brain is it will just listen to your thoughts. Remember, words are just, words can be, um, can be used to cover thoughts. But the brain yeah. listens to our thoughts. So when we continue to meditate, you know that word meditate, in, um, it actually means in a, in, a, in a different language, I forget if it's, I don't think it's Latin, but meditate means to to um to be familiar to become familiar so yes. we have yes. been familiar all our lives like what you were saying brother that we we can't walk on water so now we yeah. have to meditate go ahead brother you were saying no I, what you were saying there i was just going to echo that is because of the um, lack of meditation on mm -hmm. the word that we have become so fearful of that. And I have been confessing ever since I was on the Sea of Galilee three years ago, I told Rita, before I pass in this life, I'm gonna walk on water. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and I'm not joking about that. I believe. I'm serious because you know, all things are possible to them that believe. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want that to be, to become, uh, a part for me to self aggrandizement for people to think, oh well, sham walk and walk. No. Mm -hmm. But there may be there may be a situation that will come up where me walking on water will either save lives or I will be able to save my own life Hallelujah. by doing it. And that situation will come up in my life if I believe that with all my heart that there's such a thing that is in store for me. 
I don't know why I started to believe that. I just started to believe it when I was on, on, on the Sea of Galilee. I was looking at it and I, we were in Capernaum and I was telling Rita, I'm going to try it. I'm going to walk on the water. Why don't you take a picture? <laughs> And from then, this things, I thought I said it in joke, but afterwards, I was, I was starting to see, and then especially after this monumental um, recovery that I, Yahuwah made for me and gave me a new life, uh, it, the sky is the limit. Hmm. Do you think his hand is only strong enough to heal me from cancer? No. His hand is... A, is strong enough to, I could walk on water, I could walk through walls. It depends on what his purpose is. And if he work his purpose in you, it is he that wills and do for you. Wow. You know, wow. Spirit so wills and do. Well, we, we have to come to believe that. Powerful. When we come to believe that he walks in you and lives in you and is your Elohim, and he wills to do for you, then that's it. It's he is willing to do it. He is doing the work, just using you as a vessel, but he is doing it. So if we could get ourselves to get in line to do what he did and, and listen, I know I may be singing really out there somewhere, but mm -hmm. John 14 states what I am saying in, in big print. It says, the works that I have done, you can do them and even greater works because I go to the Father. And because I go to the Father, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. Ah, 200%. 200%. I am believing for anything. Anything, I, if there is an obstacle in my way, and I know that wasn't put there by my Father, I am believing that it's going to be moved and it will move. <laughs> and, and brother, I'm into what you're saying. And if I can just say this is the perfect you open up a perfect uh, segue i've actually had this in my thoughts um and just waiting for the perfect time and i think that time has arrived <laughs> brother no matter how you you know see it but for me your victory over the big c is for me is walking on water there you go. And, and brother, mm -hmm. I, I have thought about this, and I'll leave it up to you whenever you're ready, but perhaps you'd like to share your testimony. Um, yeah. I'll give you the floor, you know, and you yeah. let me know. Um, I'll have the scriptures ready up front, and I will have, I will share the screen as you wish. But yeah. I think, like you said, if walking on water can save others yes. i believe that by the power of words of your testimony yes. you will accomplish just like you said so yes, i believe that with all my heart because the father has a purpose and we are not we are not thinking that god is our father is is a puppeteer that we could pull strings and we, that's not what i'm talking about mm -hmm. i am one and i know you know that i am saying that there are things that sometimes comes from nowhere and we think it comes from nowhere because we have never had the experience before. But the father implants a thought in your mind and then he, he waters that and he, he nourishes that and that becomes inside of you. It builds up inside of you and it becomes something that you convicted of in your heart and you start meditating. You see, you just use that word. You start to meditate on it. When you, when you meditate, you become one with that thing. Yeah. And, and that is, that is not, nothing is impossible to him who believes. And if the master said it, why are we thinking there is something impossible? Nothing means nothing is impossible with Yahuwah. Absolutely. All things, are, all things are possible to them that believe. So we have to start at some point drawing a demarcation line and saying, I take him at his word and I am going to do this because he said I can. Wow. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm doing this uh, daily bread and 
today was uh, about uh, David and Bathsheba and how Nathan confronted him. And the question is, how do we get in deep into sin? And it says, step by step. Yes. The same way we get out of sin, you know, step by step and into growing into the knowledge of Yahusha the Messiah, step by step. So if we are willing to answer, you know, he'll give us what we can do at that time. But if we continue in well doing, he'll give us more and more until oh, wow. we'll shine eventually like him. <laughs> That's right. Get back the light. <laughs> way, that's a good way to come to the end of this session. It's very good. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Hello. Yeah. So I leave it to you, brother. You let me know. We'll okay. Now yeah, we're we'll pray. Is the water? Yeah, it's time. Uh, but before before we pray, uh, I, I would like to, to add something to what you were showing. I'm still looking at this prison thing in front of us here, and I was mentioning that ship. Is a trapezoid shape. Yes. Now, trapezoid was, as you was alluding to, and I thought you were going there. That's why I didn't say anything. Mm. A trapezoid is exactly that. It's a trap that was baited <coughs> by Halal Ben Shakar, the one you call Lucifer. Wow. For the, for, for, he, he, because we are now starting to understand the different um, dimensions. Mm. Later on, as Father opens our understanding, we will understand exactly what you are showing in that thing there, how he trapped mankind in that thing. And the only way out of that, the Master said it, I am the way. You see, we have to understand what he meant when he said that. Yes. We, we, we don't get it, but a, but, a, but a second temple period Jew understand very well what he meant when he said, I am the way. You see, you are locked in that trapezoid by the devil and there's only one way out. Yes. One way out. That's what he is telling you. Yes. I am the way out of this trap the devil has put you in. That's I am the only way out. And that's what I wanted to share with you. Hallelujah. Thank mm. you, brother. That is valuable. Awesome. And actually, a segue too to that is exactly what we're going to talk about next Tuesday. You know, these are still from that, you know, I haven't, uh, the notes that I have here, this is still from the two, three weeks ago when I was up to okay. 1 p.m. I have, like, you know, so next Tuesday we continue. And yes. ooh, that's a great I mean, segue. That's fantastic. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Okay. So if you want, I'll pray. Please. Avinu Malkenu, our Father, our King. You'd hear while hey, El Shaddai, the great I am, the only true Allahim, possessor of heaven and earth. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Father. And we, as you heard us during this pod, um, webcam tonight, we are talking about your awesome, awesome creation of us. And how we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and how we were robbed of that potential early by the, the, the cunning Hillel Ben Shakar. And we mm -hmm. have had to live, as my sister was saying, in a dumbed down state. But that's mm -hmm. only a temporary condition. But those of us who are in the Mashiach Yahusha, we are not anymore in the trapezoid. <laughs> we are out of that. But wow. we need to recognize it yes. because I know, Father, a story that there were, there were people that were emancipated by the law in, nine, in 1861 by Lincoln. They were free, but the land owners were, were saying they don't know they're free, so let's not tell them. So they remain, they remain slaves even longer. But they were, the law had already set them free. Moshiach has already set us free. Yes. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And we are no longer in this trapezoid by the enemy. We are out of that. We are not limited by time and space. We have the full potential as our master has. We just have to learn how to believe for it and how to walk in the light as he is in the light so we can have fellowship one with another. Help us, Father, too, as these 
as the sister of ours is doing the, 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 the real, using the heavy shovel and digging and bringing out mm -hmm. and presenting it so like flawlessly and we could just feast on the manna. We, we don't realize the, the work and the, the stress and the mm -hmm. labor of love that goes into this. So I want to thank you for her and for all the effort she puts in to present this to us weekly and help us to believe as a group because in, the, in with a three phone cord is cannot be broken and as we most nights is just three three homes we are we are we are building we are building Pat, and we are building on the solid foundation of Mashiach Yahushua the rock we are building that on that foundation so the winds and the storm and the gales and the hurricanes could blow but our house is not going to fall because we are on the rock. So mm -hmm. we know, Father, that as we as we continue, we will have what we say from our mouth because our mouth enlightens and empowers. But if we speak your truth out of our mouth, we'll go forth. Out among, from your, out, your word says, from our mouth you will go forth life or mm -hmm. death. Yes. Good or bad. So we are what well, we only want to speak the words of life and blessings out of our mouth. <coughs> yes. Help us to speak what we want and not to go contrary to what we want. Help our mouth and our actions and thoughts to be in perfect alignment, That's in agreement. Right. Yes. So we can, we can achieve what you have already paid for with the precious blood of our Mashiach for us. He has attained that for us. We are just not enlightened to know what's prepared for us, what is already available for us. We are settling, we are scratching with the chickens when should we should be soaring with the eagles, Father. Mm -hmm. Forgive us for our, our lack of trust. Forgive us for our lack of uh, studying the world and, and digging to find out really who we are in the Mashiach. Oh. Oh. Uh, and because our potential in him is limitless, like he is limitless. Yes. Because he, again, I want to repeat what he said. The works that I have done, you can do them and even greater because I go to the Father. Mm -hmm. So help us to trust him and believe his words, Father. Believe your words. This, this Torah that we hold in our hands, cover to cover is all your words. And every one of those words are true and irrevocable. That's right. You said your words are irrevocable. So what is it that is holding us back? unbelief, doubt, and fear. Tonight we come against this trio, fear, doubt, and unbelief, and we cast you down and out Amen. from our lives, forbid you to broadcast your lies to us. We are not going to be receptors of fear, doubt, and unbelief. No, we have love, power, and a song, mind. I declare that in the atmosphere, and I thank you, Father, for, for once again, for Susan and all her preparation. Thank you for Josanna, being a great support for Susan. They pray together during the week. And I thank you for all the work that she puts out in getting these books and sending connection and websites and uh, links for us to see and hear and do things. She's ministering in her calling, Father. I pray that you help her to continue to do what you call her to do and be a blessing. In the name of Yahusha, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And now, Father, may Yahuwah make his face, may Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you. May Yahuwah be gracious unto you. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom. Have a good night. You too.